Hey guys, have you ever shot a video in low light condition? Well, recently I shot a video outdoors at night for the first time. Based on the previous results with the DJI Pocket 2, I knew there would be some overexposure, but I thought, hey, how bad could it be, right? Well, the difference with daytime shot is that the camera cranks up the ISO even more to compensate for the low ambient light. As you can see, not only are lights overexposed, but whole areas would appear as blobs of pure white. By the way, the raw video files do contain real-time exposure data which is shown on the screen. The ISO number maxes out at 6400, and as you see, the camera is happily shooting at very high ISO, even as the picture suffers from overexposure. In most cases, you really only have one shot at capturing the scene as it unfolds in front of you. It would be a shame if the video does a poor job of it. So, it's time to delve into the Pro Mode to try to limit the exposure manually. The DJI Pocket 2 has an automax parameter in which the ISO is still automatic, but not allowed to exceed a certain threshold number. You can choose from 7 automax settings from 100, 200, all the way to 6400. Automax 6400 means the ISO is unconstrained, so it's basically the same as auto exposure. Also, from my preliminary tests, I found that shooting at 30 versus 60 FPS gives surprisingly different results. Well, it was surprising at first, but later it all kind of made sense. So let's also throw in frame rates into the mix and see how it all fits together. Alright, let's do it! In this real world example, we have a courtyard with lit signboards in the background. And I guess what we want is good exposure for both. That is, the optimal ISO should be high enough to expose the courtyard, but not so high that the signboards are overexposed. At AutoMax 100, 30 FPS, everything is still looking dim. The 60 FPS is even darker, and if you notice, there is some flicker. At AutoMax 200, 30 FPS, the signboards look okay. The courtyard is getting brighter, but could use more exposure. The 60 FPS hasn't changed by much, and there is still flickering. At AutoMix 430 FPS, I think the exposure is pretty nice on the courtyard. Now you can clearly see people and tables and chairs. The signboards are still fine, but if you notice, the Heineken star is supposed to be red, but here it's starting to turn orange. If the ISO is any higher, it would surely be overexposed. It looks like AutoMix 400 is the optimal setting for this scene. For 60 FPS, the exposure is decent, but the courtyard still looks dark and could use higher ISO. At AutoMax 830 FPS, the signboards are now overexposed. Colors are no longer accurate, as seen in the Heineken star that looks washed out. The courtyard looks nice and bright, but it looks like this setting is already past the optimal exposure level. For 60 FPS, the signboards are looking nice, colors are still accurate, and the courtyard is decently exposed. For this scene, AutoMax 800 may well be the optimal setting. At AutoMax 1600, no change for 30 FPS. For 60 FPS, notice that the star is no longer red but orange. The color is no longer accurate. It looks like this setting is already past the optimal exposure level. Beyond this point, for AutoMax 3200 and 6400, the exposure doesn't change for either 30 or 60 FPS. So let's do a recap. In this real world example, we explore the automatic settings from 100, 200, etc. As the number increases, the brightness also goes up to a point where the scene is well exposed and colors are still accurate. Beyond this point, colors are washed out but the exposure stays the same even as the automax setting goes up further. This actually makes sense if you look at the ISO numbers. At automax 800 or above, the setting is no longer limiting because the camera has the ISO set around 660. So to the human eye, ISO 400 is optimal, but the camera thinks it should be 660. Similarly for 60 FPS, as the automax number increases, the brightness goes up to a point where the scene is well exposed while still retaining color accuracy. Beyond that, 
Ultimately, at AutoMax 3200, the setting is no longer limiting because the camera has the ISO set around 2200. So to the human eye, ISO 800 is optimal, but the camera thinks it should be 2200. Now when we compare 30 with 60 FPS, it's a little surprising. The first time I saw these results, I thought I must have made a mistake. Why do they look different? Why does 30 FPS look brighter? I thought higher or lower frame rates only had something to do with the smoothness of the video. Well, it turns out, the answer is in the second exposure parameter, the shutter speed. For 30 FPS, the shutter speed is 33 per second, that is, the exposure time is 30 milliseconds. But for 60 FPS, the shutter speed is 100 per second, that is, the exposure time is 10 milliseconds. This means that at 60 FPS, for each frame, the camera sensor captures light for a shorter time. So it makes sense that it needs higher ISO to achieve the same exposure as 30 FPS. To verify that the frame rate effect is real, I came back a week later to do more shots, but this time all in auto mode. What you see is four different shots from low to high ISO, spanning a factor of four. The ISO values are vastly different, but how come the exposure all looks the same? Well, this makes sense because the shots were at different frame rates, and thus different shutter speeds. Higher shutter speeds mean lower exposure times, so the camera compensates this by setting higher ISO values. The shots are all overexposed, but it's worth noting that the exposure looks consistent across the board. So this is not a coincidence. In four shots of different frame rates and thus different shutter speeds and exposure times, the camera manages to adjust the ISO so that it arrives at the same exposure level every single time. This tells me that the camera's algorithm is doing its job. We just need it modified so that the camera agrees with the human eye on what should be the optimal exposure. Let me close by muddying the water. So we explored different automatic settings and found the one that produces optimal exposure. But to be clear, it doesn't necessarily apply in other scenarios. For example, this is from the same shot as the footage you saw in the beginning. In real life, this scene was actually quite dark because except for that lamppost, light was coming only from across the street. When I shot the footage, it was unsettling because it's dark, but the viewfinder was looking bright. I thought, wait, what's this bright thing on the screen? Well, it turns out the bright thing is the inflatable playground I was walking past. It's just that the camera cranks up the ISO to the max so it looks bright. So for this scene, maximum ISO is quite suitable. And it's actually amazing that the camera managed to pull this off with minimal noise. This tells me that the camera optics are quite capable. It's just the software that needs improvement. Nowadays, we keep hearing about AI this, AI that. It seems that DJI just needs to put a little AI to work to fix the overexposure problem. Maybe for the Pocket 3? All right, that's it for now. I hope you get something out of this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.